Well, I've got some stats for you here, sure. Neil. Surveys find that roughly 80% of Gen Z believe in astrology to some degree. Mm-hmm. 72% of those Gen Z and millennials allowed astrology to influence major life decisions like romance, health, work, mm-hmm. and education. And many Gen Zs now are checking their horoscopes weekly. Yeah, I, we live in a free country. So I don't, I'm not going to try to stop them. Uh, what would be sad is if that number got to 100%, and then, then you wouldn't be generating scientists or engineers or people who the objective truths of the world matter. And then the civilization just goes back to the cave where everything that happened in the natural world was mysterious, created by forces beyond our knowledge and understanding. And uh, this is the, the title of one of Carl Sagan's books, The Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the dark. That was the subtitle of that book. So if you want to think you're not in control of your fate because the sun, moon, and planets are, it's like I said, it's, it's a free country. Is there anything that you've learned that the universe does to influence us? Yeah, the sun rises and I wake up because I want to be awake during the day. Yes. That people aren't. Yeah, the tide comes in and I move my, 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 my beach chair back because the tide came in. Yeah, <laughs> there are things that influence my behavior. Yes. But it's not much more than that. Uh, Earth is tipped on its axis, so we have seasons. I buy coats and wear them in the winter. That influences my behavior. What's your star sign? Well, I once had someone take a class of mine at the Hayden Planetarium that I taught on astrophysics. And at the end, she, like the second to last class, she came and said, oh, I, thank you. I, thanks for the class. I enjoy, I'm enjoying the class. But I want you to know I'm an astrologer, and I'm taking the class so I can cast horoscopes better. So I said, it's really working for you? She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, for example, what's your horoscope sign? And I said, shouldn't you be able to figure that out? <laughs> if all this works and you cast horoscopes, you ought to tell me what my sign is. She said, okay, okay. She said, are you Gemini? I said, no. Cancer. I said, no. Uh, It must be Leo. I said, no. Eight horoscopes later, she gets the correct answer and says, I knew it. So I'm simply saying that her ninth guess out of 12 was correct, and she declares, I knew it. Why do people want to believe in things like this? I, I think they want the world to still have mysteries because mysteries are beautiful things. However, the world still has mysteries. They're just different mysteries from whatever there used to be. And so follow the mysteries where they take you. And there's another branch of all of us who must have answers to every question because they're not learning to love the questions. They only want to love the answer. So they say, what was around before the Big Bang? I said, I don't know. We got top people. Something had to be around. I said, I don't know. Must have been God. So there's their answer. And then they're happy. What happens after death? Well, it looks like you rot in the ground. But otherwise, I mean, that's what physics. It's got to be something. Your soul. I said, there's got to be. God, heaven. Okay, that's their answer. They've got their answer. And if that's your answer at every turn, you, you make a, you're not as good an investigator of the unknown, because you just invented the answer to the unknown. You're, you're content. What is dark matter? Dark? I don't know. We got top people working. Is that the, the spirit of God? Okay. Then that person won't walk into a lab to continue to study what dark matter and dark energy is. I don't mind if you want to say it's God, but don't let that stop your curiosity. But if you say it's God and then you're done, then you're not very useful in the lab. Those people seem to be happier and healthier, though, which is the surprising thing. Religious people. Well, again, so it, it could be because they believe there's a God that tells them who to sleep with and where to eat and how to pray, or because they have a regular dose of community. I don't know that those are completely separable variables. There are people who they love and care about that they see every week, which is not happening with so many people today. Do you think you would be happier if you believed in God? I'm a pretty happy guy. Do you think you'd be happier? 
I don't know. I see people. I've seen very happy people in uh, celebrating their version of God. But then there are other people who are really happy in their version of God. And here's the problem. Deeply religious people typically find other religions. Deeply religious people will declare for themselves and others in that religion that all the other religions are false. 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 And if not false, just make preposterous claims. It is so obvious to them how false all the other religions are. Now you go to this religion. It is obvious how preposterous the rest of the religions are. You go around religion to religion. And so what's really going on here is devout people in so many of these religions are atheists to every religion but their own. Every religion but their own. Okay? How can a mountain have moved to Muhammad? That can't be. Okay. Oh, but yes, the creator of the universe impregnated a woman in the Middle East 2,000 years ago. That's more believable than anything in the Quran for this person. Okay? And then the Jews, he's saying, you're Jesus is the son of God? What are you, what are you crazy? Where'd you get that from? He's a good Jew, nice prophet, but son of God, you're going too far. So everybody's saying what's not true. So they're atheists for every other, they just don't believe any other religion. Whereas an actual atheist just has one more religion to that category. It's your religion. The atheist agrees with you that all the other religions are preposterous in their claims. But they also believe, they also think your religion is preposterous. And people don't accept that. They don't, it doesn't land well. So I don't have any problems with people being religious. I don't have any issues with that. It's, um, I don't try to impose my, I, other people try to do it. I've seen them do this. I have a quote where I'm misquoted just because they want me on their side. Okay, you ready? It's a simple quote. If every time I tell you science doesn't understand it, and you say, well, God must be that. God made the universe because we don't, God made life because we don't know how to make life yet. God, if that's, if that is your definition and understanding of God, then as science progresses, it will solve these questions, pushing the God back outward to places that have yet to be discovered. And so the quote is, if to you, God, is where science has yet to tread, then God is an ever-receding pocket of scientific ignorance. That's, that, that references what philosophers have called God of the gaps. It goes way back, thousands of years. If we don't understand it, there's a God. The storm is Poseidon. Okay? Lightning bolt struck, it's Zeus. All right? That's God of the Gaps. God of the Gaps is a time-honored exercise in human civilization. And all I'm saying is that statement is objectively true because it's an if statement. If to you God is where science has yet to tread, then as science continues to tread, you're a pocket, a shrinking pocket of scientific change. That's your God. Okay? It's not an opinion. That's a statement of an if statement, the consequences of an if statement. I've had people take the second half and put it on a t-shirt. God is an ever receding pocket of scientific in, uh, ignorance. Neil deGrasse Tyson. That is not what I said. That's half of what I said. And that's only true if to you, God, is where science has yet to tread. But to pull that out and make that the truth? No. I would never make such a statement. Ever. You're 66, right? Hang on. Hang on. I will be 67 in a month. In a month. Okay. So you're a month from this recording. So I'm 33. Okay. We're half my age. Exactly half. I, I, and I was wondering, you're a very wise man. What, what is the advice that you wish someone had said to you at 33 that you could give to me now? I have no such advice, and I'll tell you why. If you're alert, and you're smart, alert meaning you notice things, and you're, you're smart, and you, you learn. Mm. 
living life itself is the lesson. So, if, so a version of what you just asked is, what, given what you know today, what would you tell yourself if you met yourself when you were 15, 20, 25, 30, whatever? And I said, I wouldn't tell him anything. Because if I gave a bit of wisdom, to, I said, you're about to do that, but don't do that. Okay? There's no better lesson than doing something and learning that you shouldn't do it. That's the best lesson. We don't live life because there's a list of things that other people said don't do. You're going to explore your life. That's what you're going to do. And some things are great, and some things you don't want to do again. Some things you're bad. That's where the wisdom comes from. You earn it. It's the most, it's the most, it's the strongest kind of wisdom you can have, provided you learn from a mistake. If you're just an idiot and you just keep making the mistake, my advice for you is don't make the same mistake twice. But that's, you don't need me for that. So you'll make a decision about this podcast or some business decision. And no, it didn't turn out right. Here's a better example of this. You ready? This is a very American kind of story I'm about to tell. Immigrant comes over. Back when that was a thing you could do. Comes to the United States. And they work hard. Very hard working. They first sweep the the street in front of a storefront, and then they're in the store, and they learn the trade. And then the owner dies, and they take over the trade. And they're working hard, and they're scrapping, and and then they buys the adjacent store, and they build the thing, and becomes, and then he moves, and he lives in a big house, and he has kids, okay? And he says to himself, when I was your age, I had to, like, scrounge for food and I had to like sweep things and I want to make sure my kids don't have to do that I want to make sure they don't have to do that okay so you provide things for them so they don't have to do this and now they grow up and they're adults and they're deadbeats they have no motivation they have no ambition they have no vision statement because everything got handed to them. And what, what does the adult say to the kids? Wh- where did I go wrong? I gave you everything I didn't have. That's where they went wrong. Because they gave the kids everything he didn't have. And what made that person was what they struggled, the, de- the decisions they had to make, the decisions they got right, the decisions they got wrong, who they met, how they treated people. This is life experience. And it doesn't come on a bumper sticker doesn't come on a, what's the secret? Just like going to someone's home and one of the, one of the hosts uh, is, a, is actually a trained chef, right? And maybe worked in a restaurant and they prepare this ex- exquisite meal. And you say, this is delicious. What's your secret? Oh, the secret? I went to chef school for six years. That's the secret. You're thinking this is one sentence I could tell you and then you, th- that'll make everything better. No, no. Just stay alert, learn new stuff every day, and learn from your mistakes because those lessons are greater than someone just telling you to not do it. Then you have no such life experience to build into the wisdom that you want to acquire in the years to come. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously, and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.